Hey doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 20, Higher Level Organic, Volume 1, where we look at SM1, SM2. Let's go. All right, Volume 1, what are SM1 and SM2 reactions? We look at mechanisms and we discuss a nuclear file. The IB understandings and applications focus around SM1 and SM2 reactions, and we also talk about the solvents necessary for those reactions. We need to know the mechanism, and then we need to know some of the stereochemistry effects of the reaction. Okay, so the reaction between a halogenoalkane and hydroxide is known as a nucleophilic substitution reaction. A nucleophile is a species that contains a lone pair of electrons that can be donated to an electron deficient carbon or, or center. So for SN1 and SN2, a primary alcohol undergoes the SN2 mechanism to form the alcohol, and the tertiary halogenoalkane undergoes an SN1 mechanism. The secondary alcohols, well, they undergo SM1 and SM2, and you won't be asked about the mechanism for that one. So the SN2 reaction between a primary halogenoalkane and an aqueous sodium hydroxide mixture has the following mechanism. So we have our nucleophile with our lone pair of electrons, and it attacks a positively charged carbon atom, and that's because the bromine, or the halogen, takes away the electrons in the bond between the carbon and bromine. That allows us to form an intermediate where the hydroxide is partially bonded to that positively charged carbon atom and the bromine is still partially bonded to that carbon as well. We've got a negative charge because our hydroxide now is partially bonded to it. And that's known as the intermediate. After the intermediate product is formed, the bromine, the leaving group, will simply leave and then we will form a covalent bond between the carbon and the oxygen. The rate of the formation of ethanol is dependent on both the concentration of the hydroxide ions and the concentration of the halogenoalkane. So the rate is equal to K times the concentration of both of the reactants. When we have an SN2 mechanism, we have some stereochemistry. And what happens here is we have backside attack by the nucleophile. So that means that it attacks the carbon at 180 degrees from the halogen. And that's because the halogen is a fairly big atom and this, the, the nucleophile simply can't attack that carbon from the same direction. So that's what we call steric hindrance. So the nucleophile has to come in from the other way to attack the carbon atom, which then inverts that carbon. So we say that that carbon becomes inverted and the hydroxide is now on the other side. You can think of it as being kind of like an umbrella, and then if you invert the umbrella, you push it out the other way, and that's what we mean by inverting that carbon atom. So there is some stereochemistry involved in an SN2 reaction mechanism. The SN1 reaction is a reaction between a tertiary halogenoalkane and sodium hydroxide. The mechanism is described as SN1, substitution nucleophilic one reactant, because we only have one reactant involved in the first step. The first step of an SN1 reaction is where the electrons in the carbon to bromine bond move towards the bromine in what's called heterolytic fission. It breaks apart the bond and the bromine takes the two electrons, so it's not evenly shared. That forms what we call a carbocation, where we have a carbon with a positive charge. Now that carbocation is relatively stable, but it takes a long time to produce. Once that carbocation is formed, the nucleophile, the hydroxide, can come along very quickly and interact with that positively charged carbon, forming our tertiary alcohol. So here's an example where we're asked to show the mechanism to demonstrate the formation of propen-1-ol from 1-chloropropane. So 1-chloropropane has the formula CH3CH2CH2Cl. Now I'm going to draw this in a stereochemical, stereochemistry way because we have to show the inversion in this reaction. So here I have my 1-chloropropane. I've got my positively charged carbon, my negatively charged chlorine, the electrons in the bond head towards the chlorine atom, and then that allows my hydroxide to come in and attack that positively charged carbon from 180 degrees, so the backside attack. That's going to form my carbocation intermediate, where 
my intermediate, sorry, not carbocation, just my intermediate, where I have both a partial bond to the chlorine and a partial bond to my hydroxide. That intermediate has a negative charge because the OH- carries the negative charge. After the formation of the intermediate, the leaving group, the chlorine, will take its electrons that it's gained from the bond, allowing a bond to form between the carbon and the oxygen, the nucleophile, which gives us our propane one ol Remember that the stereochemistry effect is that the OH is at 180 degrees from where it was initially. The mechanism for the methyl propane 2 ol from the chloroalkane 2 methyl to chloromethyl propane, well that's a tertiary alcohol, so I have to show the electrons in the bond moving towards the chlorine, undergoing heterolytic fission, this time to form my carbocation, which will have the positively charged carbon, and then along comes my, my nucleophile, my hydroxide, which is able to attack that positively charged carbocation very quickly to form our tertiary alcohol. The leaving group, the chlorine, it has a negative charge, so it is now removed. So then I can form my product, which will be propane 2, methyl propane 2 ol, my tertiary alcohol. Okay, so the reaction conditions. SN2 reactions are best conducted using aprotic non-polar solvents. SN1 reactions are best conducted using protic polar solvents. So what does that actually mean? That's the understanding. Okay, a protic polar solvent is suitable for an SN2 reaction. That's because in the process we need to form no hydroxide or NH groups which can't form hydrogen bonds with the nucleophile. So we don't want the nucleophile to form hydrogen bonds. We don't want that. So what has to happen here is we need our hydroxide to remain as a nucleophile. We want to leave it naked because we want it to be able to attack that positively charged carbon. So we leave it na naked, which means it's not solvated, which means it maintains its effectiveness as a nucleophile and is able to attack that positively charged carbon. Acetone is an example of a good solvent. For an SN1 reaction, we want to use a polar protic solvent that means that our solvent would contain an OH or an NH bond and we want it to be able to form hydrogen bonds with the nucleophile. That's because we don't want it to attack the tertiary halogenoalkane. We want it to remain solvated before the, the carbocation forms and then once the carbocation forms, then the nucleophile is able to attack it. So good examples of a polar protic solvent would be things like water, ammonia, NH3, or even methanol. So the difference is we want one to be able to attack the positively charged carbon very quickly, and in the other one we want to keep it away until the carbocation is formed. We also have to choose about the solvent and the leaving group. So the solvent we touched on in the last slide. Let's now have a look at the leaving group. So by the leaving group, we're talking about the halogen. What halogen do we have on the alkane to make it easier to form the alcohol? So if we have a look at the different halogens, we can see that a CI, a CCL, a CBr, and a CF all have different bond enthalpies. So we can look those up in the data book. So the one with the easiest bond to break is the CI bond. So that means that it will be the, the easiest or the best leaving group. It's going to find it easiest to break that bond between the carbon and iodine, releasing the iodine and that leaving either the carbocation or the positively charged carbon atom for the nucleophile to attack. So it's all about bond enthalpy. The one that's easiest to break will be the best leaving group. The rate will be fastest when we have something that is a better leaving group. So if we have to choose, the one with the better leaving group will have a faster rate. Now the choice of solvent, well that comes down to what type of nucleophile you have. If we have hydroxide or water, well which one would be a better choice of a nucleophile? Well the definition of a nucleophile is something that can donate a pair of electrons to a positively charged centre. The hydroxide has a lone pair of electrons 
and a negative charge. So it is a better nucleophile than something like water, which has a lone pair of electrons, but is neutral. So the OH- will be more strongly attracted to that positively charged carbon, which means that it will have a faster rate of reaction. If we're asked to choose the solvent for a reaction, we need to remember which solvent to choose for SN1 or SN2. If we're asked to choose about the nucleophile, then you need to think donating of the electrons and the negative charge. Okay, volume one, some top tips. Remember the curly arrows from the bond to the atom. And it's all about location, location, location of those curly arrows and you will be assessed on them. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.